Good morning. Thank you, Zakia. Um, I want to start off by thanking so many of you that I had the opportunity to meet last night at the wonderful reception that Ambassador Urrutia held for us. And I want to particularly thank Vice Minister Fernandez de Soto for being here on very little sleep, um, but making it because of his commitment to this event, um, as well as Ambassador Giron um, and, uh, and Oscar Gamboa. Where's Oscar? I lost him this morning. Um, and, and all of the members of the Colombian delegation uh, who are here today uh, as we kick off the first plenary of the U.S. Columbia Action Plan on Racial and Ethnic Equality. This meeting, which many of us have worked on for quite a while, is really a concrete affirmation of our shared commitment to social inclusion, the equality of opportunity for every member of our societies, and to our broader commitment to democracy, human rights, open societies, and prosperity for all of our citizens. This year is the 50th anniversary of the historic March on Washington when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech. And that march was pivotal in this country, laying the foundation for a more just, equal, and inclusive United States that we continue to strive for. But in Colombia, there is also a dream being pursued, a dream of peace, and in preparation for it, the work to make society more inclusive and more equal. In both the United States and Colombia, we now embrace vibrant racial and ethnic tapestry that comprises the societies, histories, and cultures of our two nations. From these challenges and from our triumphs as well as our setbacks, we have gained knowledge and experience that deserves to be shared so it can benefit everyone, shared among ourselves and shared more broadly thereafter. Through the action plan, we share those experiences and create a way forward that embraces a diplomacy of social inclusion. How we go about doing that, however, is important. This meeting brings together so many different sectors of society, representatives from across government, from legislatures, civil society, the private sector, and incorporates our people-to-people -people and educational exchanges. Participation by such a diverse group is certain to give us even better results that underscore our commitment to social inclusion. With the action plan, we've gone beyond traditional bilateral cooperation of government to government to form true public-private partnerships for advancing equality and combating discrimination. Those structures and the institutions we create are important, but what is most critical is that this meeting generate concrete results in the year to come. I challenged everybody on that last night and I'll continue to do so. Education is among the most critical parts of this discussion, opening a world of possibilities for young people. Secretary Kerry has spoken about the importance of investing in education to promote good citizens. Quality educational opportunities for all provide individuals, the chance to contribute to society to the full extent of their abilities, regardless of race, eth ethnicity, gender, or sexual orientation. And we need all of our people acting at their maximum capacity in order to ensure full development and broad prosperity. We recognize the very significant advances that Columbia has made in primary and secondary education over the past 20 years with some 90% of Colombian students now enrolling in primary and secondary schools, demand for universities will also increase. In 2011, President Obama launched the 100,000 Strong in the Americas program, an initiative to increase international study between the United States and Latin America and the Caribbean to 100,000 stu 100, students in each direction. That means we have to double the number of students that we have currently studying either in the Western Hemisphere, in Latin America and the Caribbean, or in the United States, because we're only at about 100,000 total right now. One of the goals for this meeting is to find ways to expand academic opportunities and encourage greater diversity in international study. More diverse students, locations, academic institutions, and types of degrees. Because we know that unless we broaden that pool of students who have the experience of living in another culture, 
we will not have met our President's challenge. Over 300 Colombians have participate, participated in the Fulbright Afro-Colombian Leaders Program, the Fulbright Cultural Studies for Afro-Colombian and Indigenous Communities Program, the Martin Luther King Fellows Program, and the College Horizons Program at U U.S. institutions. I've had the good fortune to meet some of them. And we hope to increase the number of participants and expand the alumni network. I have never seen students so brimming with ideas and brimming with enthusiasm that all of us I know want to harness and encourage. But young people also learn and develop outside the classroom. And that's why the United States and Colombia are also working to provide additional opportunities to engage in inclusive sports activities and programs. The lessons of leadership and teamwork that our youth develop playing sports are applicable to all aspects of life and build a foundation for social inclusion. Skills acquired in the classroom and on the playing field, when successfully applied, strengthen a country's economy. This is not just good because it is the right thing to do, it is also the smart thing to do. Equal employment opportunities for all sector of societies are good for the economy and obviously a key element to achieving equality. Vice President Biden, who's traveled to Columbia recently, likes to quote his wife, Jill, who is a full-time educator at a U.S. community college, when he says that any country that out-educates you will out-compete you. The Colombian economy has experienced almost a decade of strong economic performance, and the entry into force of the U.S.-Columbia Free Trade Agreement, as well as Colombia's participation and leadership in the Alliance of the Pacific, increased the possibility for further growth. We are working with our Colombian counterparts to ensure that the benefits of that growth are shared by all in society. Through the Pathways to Prosperity initiative, we have focused on small business development and empowering women entrepreneurs. And we know that that focus is one of the best ways to in ensure social inclusion. At the 2012 Summit of the Americas, the United States and Colombia joined with others in the hemisphere to launch the Women's Entrepreneurship in the Americas program that aims to break down barriers women face when starting and growing their own businesses. Last October, the United States and Colombia signed an MOU to promote small business development. And Colombia recently opened its first small business development center in Cali. And we look forward to many more of those opening and connecting with the small business development centers in the United States. They will provide training, services, and access to capital for Colombian entrepreneurs. Another goal for this meeting is to find new ways to support minority-owned businesses and prioritize women entrepreneurs among them. Through our embassy in Bogota, in collaboration with the Colombian National Business Association, we are working to engage the private sector to increase formal employment opportunities for Afro-Colombian and indigenous youth in urban centers. As part of this partnership, private sector companies commit to develop and implement diversity protocols that will result in greater opportunities for historically marginalized groups. We're working closely with institutions, national institutions in Colombia, to improve public officials' understanding of ethnic rights throughout government and to design a labor inclusion pilot project in Cali that can serve as a basis for the design of broader labor inclusion policies. And in the United States, we are still working to level the playing field for all. We're pleased to have this opportunity to share our challenges as well as our best practices to open access to communities that have been historically marginalized. We're also interested in learning how Colombia is working to include the needs of indigenous peoples, people of African descent, and women in education, sustainable development, sports, and employment. A third goal for this meeting is to encourage technical exchanges on issues including environmental justice, strengthening leadership, and the important role of our communities in sustainable development. We know we have a great deal to learn from our successes and our challenges. And we're moving forward to fulfill the promise of our great democracies by ensuring that all citizens, even those from the most humble backgrounds, have the same opportunities to learn, to work, and to fulfill their dreams. We truly welcome the opportunities that this dialogue will produce, and we look forward to continuing this collaboration and to coming up with a work plan with concrete achievable goals over the coming year. So as I said last night, let's get to work.
Thank you so much.